Uh, Shalom, Apostle Tahar coming back at you with this truth, giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And I'm going to entitle this The Coming Passover and Abba Up. And if the Spirit jumps on me, I'll go into other topics. I don't know how long this is going to be. You know, no, normally what I'll do is I'll try to do a short ver uh, short video and um, a lot of times the spirit jumps on me and um, the video wind up being, you know, a half an hour long, almost an hour long. You know, it depends on the spirit. But anyway, first, first things first, I want to speak about the Passover. Currently, we're in the, in the new moon. As of uh, last night, uh, February 25th, 2017, at sundown. <clears throat> so we're in the midst of the new moon as of right now, which is the Sabbath. And then you have your regular Sabbaths uh, based upon the new moon. So... Right, right now, currently, it's a, a Sunday, uh, five minutes past 12 Eastern Standard Time. So we're currently in, in the, the new moon. So next week, uh, Saturday, sundown will be a Sabbath. And then the following week after that, until the next new moon comes in. So we keep the new moons and we keep the Sabbaths and the the new moon is the basis on keeping those Sabbaths so you might a lot of a lot of brothers out there say well wait a minute uh, what, what was, was we supposed to keep the Sabbath uh, the, uh, Friday <clears throat> what was, this, what was that the 24th into the 25th was we supposed to keep that a Sabbath as well besides a new moon yes because when you go into the law and let me see if I can find it right quick bear with me for a minute Okay, this is uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, which when you read from the first verse down, and this was this law was given to us in the um, in the wilderness. Because when we were uh, slaves in um, in Egypt, and we remained in Egypt for 430 years, the first 30 years we were at peace with the the so-called Pharaoh at that time. And um, it tells you in Exodus how that Pharaoh died, and a new Pharaoh came up, with, which knew not Joseph. I mean, you can read the story, you can read the account yourself. And basically, they base, they said, look, we got to put these people in slavery because they're going to join forces with other nations and uh, they're becoming great and they're going to take us down. Which they had the history of that on uh, the Hyksus or the Hyksus, which I strongly believe were, the, or, were Israelites. Because when you read about the Hyksus, it says they were Semitic uh, people. So at one time we became great and the um, people of Mizraim became greater than us. And um, the reason why they became greater than us and, you know, put us into slavery is because of the prophecy that the Mosai gave to uh, Abraham and um, 
in the book of uh, Genesis, uh, what is that, the 15th chapter, you know, it, it tells you that we will be uh, in bondage, hard bondage for 400 years. Anyway, when we left, during the time of the so-called Egyptian rulership, they had their own uh, calendar. They had, uh, you know, they did things based upon the, um, the, 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 the sun, the moon, the stars. And um, their calendar was based upon, I believe, a 10-day week. If you go do the research on that, many scholars will tell you that it was based upon a 10-day week. And at that time, we didn't have these laws, these high holy days. You know, we, we all we had to, all we did was we were under the Egyptian captivity, but we knew that we were Hebrews. Just like today, the the hundreds of millions of Jakes or billions of Jakes throughout the world, they believe that they're other nations. So they're following the ways of the nations that they came up under. Like most Israelites They'll celebrate Christmas, so-called New Year's, uh, uh, so-called Thanksgiving, um, uh, Valentine, Valentine's Day, which um, when you're around Jake, you know, when those holidays come up, Jake gets all into them holidays, man. You know, that that's, that's a religious thing to them. You know, Easter. So the same thing happened back there in Egypt. You know, we had to deal with, like I said, we knew that we were Hebrews, but we had to uh, do what the uh, Egyptians said. Now, when we left out of, when we left out of Egypt, or so-called Egypt, because that's a Greek word, we went into the wilderness, and that's when the Most High gave. Yahweh Bashem Shai gave the commandments to uh, Moses to give to the children of Israel. So when you read Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it breaks it down. And the first, uh, the first day is in the third verse, which says, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy conv convocation. Um, ye shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. So when was the starting point on that? Did you have a cal calendar out there in the wilderness? You know, did you go to a drugstore or, or a convenience store, you know, or a gas station to give you free uh, calendars? Did you get your calendar and put it on a tree? And you say, oh, here comes uh, Friday. So Friday night is, sab is a Sabbath. No, they didn't have no concept of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They went by days, the first day, the second day, the third day. So what would be the third day? If you're using common sense, it would be the new moon. So it says six days. After that, for six days, because the new moon, you didn't, you didn't work. So you count six six other days going into the seventh day that was your Sabbath. So now I'm going to jump down. Because I'm going to prove to you that you have the new moon rest which is a sabbath and then you have your 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 regular sabbath Okay, it's right here in the 38th verse, Leviticus 23, 38. I'll start from the 37th verse. It says, These 
for the feast of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. And conver convocation means a calling to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Now we don't have to offer a burnt offering because uh, Yahweh Shai, who the world ign ignorantly calls uh, the Christ, he became, Yahweh Shai became that uh, sacrifice for the children of Israel, starting with the elect. It says a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon his day. So when the Sabbath comes in, because you have a lot of groups out there, well, not a lot, but you have some groups that uh, make it convenient if the, if the Passover falls, comes in on a Thursday night or Wednesday night or whatever, they'll, they'll put it up for a, a Saturday night, which that's not, you know, scriptural. It says a, a meat offering, a, sac a sacrifice, and a drink offering, every everything upon his day so you have the new moon where you cook before the new moon came in and you had a feast you can read about that with the account of uh david and uh king saul at that time and there was a point and that's in uh i believe that's second samuel if i'm not mistaken where uh David didn't show up for the new moon, um, the new moon feast. So, I mean, if you, at, at your leisure, you can read it yourself. But it says, the 38th verse, beside the Sabbaths of Yah, beside, it says, um, 37th verse again, everything upon his day, beside, beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh. And beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto your Howard. Meaning, you you do certain sacrifices, but you might do a, you might give a gift, or you might do a a, a free will offering. You know, you have what's called a day of atonement, which you fast, but you might decide to do your own fast fast. Besides. The, the, the Day of Atonement fast, all right? So let me read that again, 37. These are the feasts of Yahweh. So he, he, he went into all the feasts, starting from the first verse on down, and then other feast days came after this. Like, for example, uh, 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 Hanukkah, um, uh, Purim, Purim, Oh, there was another one, the uh, the day of Nik Nikonar. You can read about that. It says, "These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon his day, beside the sabbaths of Yahweh." So this, so you can't say, "Well, wait a minute, we had a." Couple of Sabbath two days ago, and the new moon came in, so we got to keep another Sabbath. Yes, you got to keep another Sabbath because you have your regular Sabbath, and then you have your your um your your new your new moon. And when you understand how the so-called Hebrew calendar works, is twenty nine twenty nine point fifty three days. So. 20 29 and a half days that's that's how the cycle goes so you have 28 days which will be cut up into uh four sevens which is your sabbath and then the new moon will come in and then it will be like a reset because if the most high had it where it fell on every so-called wednesday wouldn't the most high have a 28 day calendar no, but the, 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 the cycle of the calendar is twenty is twenty nine point five three days. 
that's why the new moon sometimes the moon new moon will fall in on a uh monday night sometime it will fall in on a tuesday night and the, when you check the actual new moon sometimes it shows it coming in the morning sometimes it shows it come in in the middle of the day like three in the afternoon 12 12 noon uh 6 p.m uh 8 a.m 7 a.m because of that point 53 anyway i went a little in on this subject which is good so that's why we we that's why we know that today is the new moon so next week on a Saturday night will be the Sabbath. The following week, another Sabbath. The following week, another Sabbath. So forth and so on. And you have that last Sabbath. Then the new moon might come in two days after that. Or a day after that. So you go to the new moon. And then you uh, follow suit with those Sabbaths. So now that we know that the, the new moon is here, and this is considered the first month of the year, other brothers will go into March, and then their Passover might be in on on a so-called April or whatever, because it, because the calendar is all messed up. We don't know what real really we don't know what year we're in because Esau's calendar for the most part. I'm going back. It really really um. During the time of the, uh, you had the, uh, prior to the Gregorian calendar, you had the Julian calendar, which that Julian calendar was all messed up, which that calendar, the Julian calendar was based upon the Egyptian calendar, because before uh, Julius, uh, you know, made the people accept that calendar, he had, he had taken a trip, trip to Egypt, you read the history on that. And then I believe it was around the 15th century, if I'm not mistaken, either the 15th or the 16th century, which is the 1500s, uh, Pope Gregory uh, did away with the Julian calendar and uh, set up what, what what is now called the Gregorian calendar, which we go by today. The wall calendar is the uh, Gregorian calendar. So... The Gregorian calendar is based upon 365 days, then you have a leap year. Now, pursuant to the to the uh, Hebrew calendar, if you go by the uh, 29.53 days, a year would be, a year cycle would be, uh, what is that, uh, I believe 354 days. And our high priest Ariya used to teach that you had 360 days in a year. So when you compare that to the current Gregorian calendar, the we're way off, man. We're way off. Cause every year there's a there's an extra there's an extra five was it five to like nine days added. To the Hebrew calendar. So I mean we're, we're way off man. So the most I would have to. Reset everything when we get in the kingdom. Anyway. Since. we Since we're in the. Uh, new moon. And this is. Uh, the first month. Like I said you have other camps that are going to. You know, it's going to be a month later when they refer to that as a new moon. But I said the calendar is all jacked up. 14 days from this day, which is, um, what is that? The 11th at evening will be the Lord's Passover or Yahweh's Passover. So next week. Uh, Saturday sundown and then the following week is uh, the Passover 
So when does the Passover come in? February, I'm sorry, March, March 11th at sundown. So now I want to go into uh, the subject of Abba Up. And this was, I guess this had this had to be put up two years ago, but it but I happened to run into it. So now we're talking talking about it. This video, um, Abba Up. If you put in Abba Up, it'll it you you'll see a bunch of videos. It'll say Abba Up. Tyler says the king is coming. Must watch. There's another one. Abba Up. Baby says the king is coming. And you have a seven minute version, you have a one minute version, you have a uh, two minute and 42 second version. And this is a, a little baby by the name of Lily. Okay, one description of the video is that it says that midnight hours before this video was taken, Lily woke, woke us up looking, and I'm knocking and talking at her door she was saying with urgency she went on to say abba up abba up and she was pointing to the sky she said the king is coming he's bringing presents and then she knocked on the the uh the foot footboard of a bed she knocked she knocked on it three times then she bowed her she looked like she prostrated or bowed down her head three times and she kept saying the same thing uh, Abba up uh, the king is coming and then she took her mother's hands and formed it in into the you know when you pray you put your hands together and um, then um, whatever version of the video you watch her mother explains it you know what she thought she was saying so you know I took it to be a fulfillment of scriptures now she looks like an Edomite but she could be an Israelite now let's say she's an Edomite can an Edomite have dreams of the Most High coming back yeah did not uh, Alexander have a dream when he saw the high priest and the company of high priests that came before him he bowed down to him when he was coming into power and he said that um, I had a dream about this man, which he was talking about the high priest at that time, and he bowed down to him. And I believe the the that's in the Josephus. You know, you if I have time, I'll look it up. Maybe do a video on it. Um, the he bowed down to the priest, and the priest stood him up and explained to him. In the book of Daniel, that you're you're that guy. You're you're the you're the guy in the book of Daniel. The leopard, the uh, the he goat. So Alexander came into power because of prophecy, which is found in Daniel the uh, seventh chapter, Daniel the eighth chapter, partially in Daniel the the eleventh chapter. And this is why we believe so strongly in this in these scriptures because you know when you read for example example Daniel the seventh chapter, you know you read about the uh the first beast and the second beast and the third beast and the fourth beast was diverse from the other three beasts before it, and you know that the first the first beast, which is a a lion having eagle's wings that eventually stood up stood up upright and a man's mind was given to it we know that that's the babylonian empire and then you can actually go into secular history and read about the babylonian empire the height of the babylonian empire was during the time of Nebu, uh, uh, nebuchadnezzar and his son uh was what was his name uh 
Bel Belshazzar, which was either his son or his grandson. So when you read the scriptures, you cannot understand the prophecies without under without understanding history. You have to understand history, ancient history, a secular history. So you read the scriptures and then you go to the secular history. So the first the first king or the first kingdom, the first beast was uh uh, uh, Nebuch uh, Nebuchadnezzar the second beast was a for lack of a better term a two a two part beast you know it speaks of the beast or, or the bear which was the second beast standing up on one side having three ribs in his teeth and that represents the Medo Persian Empire the Medes came into power first and then the Persians uh became a stronger than the Medes, which they were a combined empire. And the first king of the Medes, the, the king that, you know, took down the Babylonians and, and made it a province, because it didn't, the Babylon wasn't totally destroyed. When Darius uh, came into power and took down the uh, the Babylonian king, he he be, he made Babylon a province of the Medo Persian Empire. So when you read Isaiah the thirteenth chapter about Babylon, it's not talking about ancient Babylon. It's talking about this Babylon, which is America. When you read Jeremiah fifty, Jeremiah fifty one, and there's many other scriptures on Babylon. Uh, Babylon. Uh, Isaiah forty seven. Isaiah fourteen. And when these prophets wrote these prophecies down, they didn't know it was talking about the, the new Babylon. All they knew is that it was talking about the ancient the ancient Babylonians. They didn't understand that. But when you read into these scriptures, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 14, Isaiah 47, Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, and there's many other scriptures that speak about Babylon. It's talking about this current Babylon, the daughter of Babylon or the new Babylon. And then and then from there you have the uh the Greeks, which in Daniel eight it speaks about the Greek Empire as being a, a rough goat. In uh Daniel the seventh chapter it speaks about the Greek and by empire being a uh, uh, a leopard, um, I believe, with four wings, and then you have the uh, the Roman Empire, which that's the beast that was different from all the beasts previous to 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 the uh, the fourth beast, and it speaks about having many heads and many crowns and horns. So that so that was the you can say the biggest empire at that time going back two thousand years ago. And the and the beast is back, which is NATO and the EU. And now the EU is beginning to uh, break up with the uh, Brexit, and then you have other uh, nations wanting to break away from um, the EU. So I mean if you do the you know you want to build your faith you got to read these scriptures and you got to apply these scriptures to to um uh secular accounts in history. And this is why guys fall off because they lack faith. It speaks it speaks in um See this is getting to be a long video. It's it speaks in the book of uh Hebrew. Let me go to that. Bear me for a minute. Okay, the book of Hebrews 4.
and and we're close, man. If you can't see, if if you can't see that we're at the end of this man's system, by by studying the scriptures and linking it up with with historical accounts, then you you just came in. You just came into this truth for nothing. Okay, Hebrews 4, 1 and 2. It says, let us therefore fear, and a lot of you men out there don't fear. That's why you got a lot of our people that sell out, because they don't fear the Most High. They, they, read, they read this book, the scriptures, and it doesn't register to, to them. You know, they're dealing with the here and now. It said, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, which is the kingdom, any of you should seem to come short of it. So a lot of you are going to come short of um, making it to the kingdom. You're going to have to suffer the second death because you're not written in the Lamb's book of life. The only ones that are written in the Lamb's book of life are the elect. Second verse. For unto us was the gospel preached, which is the whole book, as well as unto them, to others. So you have, in a way, a mixed multitude coming into this truth. You got guys that are really not in the truth. You got guys that are, are the prophets of the Lord in the past. Let me read that again. Second verse. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. See, when you come into this, you have to grow in this thing. You can't be stagnant. If you a guy just happy standing on the side and uh, saying, I'll just hold a sign, I'll hold posts, and you ain't got two, two years go by, three years go by, seven years go by, and basically you on the sideline holding posts. There's a good chance that you are not a man of the Lord because you're supposed to grow in this thing. Let me read the second verse again. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. When you open up a business, and I can click on this word profit. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Okay, and the word there I'll read it. It's uh, Ophi Leo, which it's which is Greek, which means to assist, to be useful. See, standing on holding posts and holding up the sign for seven, eight, nine years, he, you're really not being useful. You know, you're just a warm body in the camp, or maybe a cold body in the camp. It says to assist, to be useful, or advantageous to profit. When you open a business, let's say you're a retail business, right? You, let's say you sell t-shirts. You, you might go to a company that make you t-shirts and they might charge you $5. If you... Put the t-shirts out there and sell the t-shirt for five dollars are you going to prosper in your business hell no you got to sell your t-shirts for whatever ten dollars fifteen dollars and if people like your t-shirts what do you get back you get back you get back the money that you put in the five dollars that you put in plus another five dollars or plus another ten dollars so if you sell a hundred t-shirts you 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 invested five hundred dollars you sell a hundred t-shirts at let's say ten dollars a shirt. What are you getting back? A thousand dollars. What is your profit? You got your five hundred back, then you got five hundred in profit. Uh, profit. If it's a thousand shirts, then you get five thousand in profit, and that's how companies, uh, businesses build up. 
So this is about a build up, man. When you come into this truth, you got you to gotta grow. The Apostle Paul spoke about growing. It goes on to say to be useful, i.e. to benefit, advantage, better, prevail, profit. So you're supposed to become better in this thing. You're supposed to grow in this thing. Which there's guys that are not doing. They're, they're happy just, you know, picking up a sign and holding posts. And this is why a lot of you guys fall fall out. Because this thing becomes a burden to you. When you read it in uh, Revelation, the 10th chapter, about John receiving the book, the little book, it said it was told him, eat the book. And in, and, and in his mouth was sweet as honey. And when he, um, in his belly, it became bitter. So a lot of you guys, you it sounds good to you. But then, you know, you, you have in your mind, well, the most I better come back next year. If you don't come back next year, I'm thinking about leaving this thing and joining the Muslims or something. That that was the bitter part because you you uh, attempted to digest the book, and that's also in, his, in the book of Ezekiel. You you attempted to digest the book, and you, it didn't taste good when it went down to, into your belly. So you so you um you basically farmed it back up, and you became unfruitful and unprofitable. Second verse, Hebrews four verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached. Now the word preach is somebody that speaks this word to you. The most I set up men to teach other men and women. And the gospel is the whole the whole book. You can't add to the book or take away from, from the book. A lot of guys get offended by what's in the book. They choke on the word. It said, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So what did you lack? You lack faith. Third verse: For we which have believed do not do enter into a re, into rest, which is the kingdom. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. Wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So it was already established who's going to be saved and who's, going, who's not going to be saved. Okay, so now let's go back to... Because I was speaking about the Abba Up video. And it's funny how the spirit works because that video was put up two years ago. And we just we just discovered it. I believe that's the spirit. The spirit's telling us something. Anyway, I'm going to read Acts. And I'm going to close it on these two scriptures. Acts uh, 2 verse 16 down to 22. And then I'm going to read, go to the book of Joel. Because this is um, reiterating what, what, what uh, Joel said. It says, but this, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 17 verse. And it shall come to pass in the last days. And we're in the last days. Say of the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And all my and on my servants and on my handmaidens, servants meaning men that follow the most high, and women that follow the most high. And and you have Israelites out there that don't follow the most high that, that receive visions. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The word prophesied means to say before. 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above, 
So begin to look up in the sky at night. You know, look look to see if there's any uh, so-called UFOs out there. You had uh, what was called a, you had an eclipse, a lunar eclipse, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and then you had a uh, comet go by, and that was that was on a Friday night a couple of weeks ago, and it was also a uh, full moon. It tells you in Genesis one fourteen, the Most High set up those lights in the heavens for signs, seasons, days, and years. So, so we're in that time. It says, and I will show wonders in in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of Yahweh come. So there is going to be a great and notable day before Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. And it just, it goes deeper than just calling on on uh, the name of the Most High. It goes a lot deeper than that. Bear with me for one minute. Cause I'm I'm doing I'm I'm in the middle of something. All right, bye. Okay, I'm back. I had to pick up that phone real quick. Eighteen verse again. It says, and all my servants and all my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of Yahweh come. So we're waiting for that great and notable day of Yahweh. That's also in Malachi, the book of Malachi. It says, The day shall come that shall burn as an oven. 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. So that, like I said, that's his... Do you got It's obvious that somebody knows the name of uh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And just because you know the name and call on the name doesn't mean you're going to be saved. Because if you go to Matthew 7 verse 21, it tells you, I'm pretty much paraphrasing that, you know, just because you call on the name of the Lord, that's, that doesn't mean you're going to be saved. But them that do the will of the Father. So you got to call on his name and keep these scriptures and do what the scriptures say. Keeping the law, statutes, and, and, and commandments, going out on the highways and the byways, in season, be ready in season and out of season. And by the way, uh, all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for giving us the spirit to go out another full winter because we're at the end of the we're at the end of winter. Last year we went out all winter. The week, the year before that we went out all year, winter. The ten years before that we went out all winter. It says, "Ye men of Israel, hear these words: Yahweh of uh, Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which which the Most High did by him in the midst of you." As yourselves also know. Okay, now I'm in the book of Joel. The uh, second chapter in the 19th verse, it says, Yeah, Yahweh will answer and say unto his people, which are the Israelites, Behold, I will send you corn 
and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied there therewith. And we're going to have corn and wine and oil in the kingdom because our kingdom is going to be an earthly kingdom. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. So that's obviously talking about the coming kingdom. 20th verse. But I will remove... Now, bef before we get into the kingdom, this major event is going to happen. And, and even prior, prior to this major event, another major event is going to happen, which is the um, making the um, RFID, NFC, microchip a mandatory because it, because it is going to happen. And a lot of these Israelites and other groups that are following these other leaders that are teaching that the mark of the beast is an embargo and uh, Christianity and, or whatever they teach. A lot of those guys, they're gonna wake up and they're gonna they're gonna say, "Wait a minute, man. Let me let me see if I can get with a GMS." Or they might go along with it. Twentieth verse. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Now the uttermost north is talking about current day uh, Russia, but this northern army is talking about the army of uh, North America. That's why this place is called North America. And will drive him into a land barren and desert. That's over there in the uh, middle Middle East. That's the hotbed of uh, you know this this war. The war of Armageddon is going to kick off in the Middle East when all the nations are gathered. You know, read Joel three, which is the chapter over from the ninth verse on down. It says, um, and I, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. They're going to be facing the uh, Euphrates, and their back, their their backs are going to be to the uh, Red Sea. So it will be somewhere in that area. You know, the, the Middle East. Uh, Saudi Arabia in that in that area that region of land it said to, toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea and his stink and his stink is from the uh rotten corpses of these military people because they're going to drain every military individual male or female and uh, we're looking for a uh, Donald J. Trump or King Trump in Congress to uh, declare a uh, draft. It says, um, and his stink shall come up, and, and, and his stink is talking about men and women, because you have a lot of women in the military too. A lot of our, our people, Israelites, are, are part of this military, and they're going to they're gonna be destroyed over there. And his ill savior shall come up because he hath done great things. Yeah, great, wickedly great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh will do great things. Be not afraid, pasture of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bringeth her fruit, the fig tree, and the wine do yield their strength. So in the kingdom, everything is going to blossom. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, which are the Israelites, and rejoice in Yahweh, your, your God, your power. For he hath given you the former rain, moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain which are which is another word for blessing the former rain and the latter rain in the first month which is um that's your, we call it the passover month because after the passover that's when the the feast of weeks come in 
and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. So we're going to receive blessings. And I will and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of of Yahweh, because we're all going to praise the name of Yahweh, because we're going to be in the kingdom and we're going to know his name. Your power that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. So that's obviously talking about the kingdom. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am Yahweh, your power. Now, when you go to Revelation 25th, 20, 20, 21st chapter, excuse me, it tells you how the Lord himself is going to dwell among us. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So who are the most highest people? The children of Israel. 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my f flesh upon all, f I'm sorry, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young, and your young men shall see visions. It says now now it seems like it's talking about we're gonna receive these visions after we we're in the kingdom. No, it's talking about before the kingdom. Twenty-nine verse. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And we're in that time. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh come. Last verse, 30, 30, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. Or I should say Yahweh by Hashem Shai. For in Mount Zion, which Zion represents the children of Israel, and in Jerusalem, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place, shall be, shall be delivered. So we're looking to be delivered. As Yahweh have said, and in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. So the call is, talk, is talking about a certain number of our people being delivered. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say a shalom. And, um, you know, we here at Great Millstone, you know, we liken ourselves and believe that we are the prophets coming back. And we should all be in the spirit of prophets. You know, we really shouldn't, you want to get, get technical, we really shouldn't be calling ourselves after military you know, lieutenants and captains and, you know, we use that, but these camps are supposed to be a camp, a company of prophets. When you read the account of uh, Saul, it said, it was said of Saul that Saul, Saul went with the prophets. He was prophesying among the, the prophets. Was he a prophet? No, he was a king, a military man, a king, but the spirit jumped on him. And he became a prophet for a short time, and he and he he was among the prophets. Behold, Saul is among the prophets. So we are prophets before we're anything else, not generals, not captains. So so your job 
is to build up to being a speaker. Not being a military man. It's about being a speaker. So the order is, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter, it's, it says apostles first, second, secondarily, prophets, third, teachers, uh, helps, governments. So this group right here, we liken ourselves as being the prophets of the Most High. So what do prophets do? do? They prophesy. Where do they get the prophecies from? The book, the, the scriptures. Are the prophets prophecies already in the book? Yes. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Obadiah, uh, Zephaniah, Joel. All those men were prophets. They were not military men or businessmen. They were prophets. And they went out and prophesied. So, you know, your, your mindset should be on prophesying, on pushing this word out. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. But rather that ye prophesy. That's when in the first, first, first verse of that, of that chapter. You know, what, what manner of uh, person you ought to be in all holy uh, conversation. That's in um, uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 10 on down. It says, In which the heavens shall melt with her fervent heat. So this place is getting ready to go down, man. So you, you need to put your prof prophetic hats on. Your spiritual hats on. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say... Uh, shallow one.